half past fucking six. Go get bent. What? Who? Oh, is it Jack? Give me a chance. <laughs> Say it again. The other half's yapping. No, no, Terry, you're not. You're not coming back, son. Not in this or any other dimension. Is it him, Jack? Look, just sod off back to bed, will you? I'm dealing with it. Just go get... Just go and get arrested again, lad. What's he saying? Will you fuck off? We don't want you here. We've told you before. You're not welcome. Give it here, you. Terry? Terry? He's fucked off. Good. I thought this were going to happen, Jack. It were coming. He'll not make it through that door, don't you worry. Do you ever even think? I'll try to avoid it if I can. He could just appear. Well, he can disappear too. How the... I could chuck him back out. That's funny. I didn't realise you had the power. Well, you work with what you've got, don't you? You can't stop this. Look, it's not my fault we're not at the Flaming Rovers, so wrap up, will you? Shut up! You'll wake the neighbours, whoever the friggin' hell they are now. And don't you be thinking about looking in that attic? Wouldn't dream of it. I've padlocked it so you can't get at them smutty books, you horrible lecherous lub. Go on! That were Newton and Ridley. The ale they're delivering this morning's gone fucked in barrel. Shame with my hot pots. It's all this time jumping. Do you know where I were, Betty? Firing balls out of me chuff. I were a duo act with Sticky Vicky. Try coming down from that. You'll be pleased to know. Tomorrow morning you'll be 32 again. I'm back to work at the cafe. I'll still be about, obviously. I'm past giving a toss now, David. Apathy, mother, is a slow poison that paves the way to tyranny. Don't quote peace activist, David. You who destroys the world whenever someone dares call you an arsehole. At least you're getting something out of it this time, Mum. I guess. Think of the fun. Don't be having any of that. Shut up, Blanche! Do you know what it's like having my trouble during all this? I turned myself daft and then it goes back into my system two minutes later. That's how it is any bloody hell. I've had so many birds through the years, why couldn't I get dealt one of them instead of this? I get an empty flat and breakfast with a geriatric bastard. This geriatric bastard could be Ina Sharples tomorrow. Don't you dare joke about that, Blanche, or so help me. Not only are there no dates on this, Rita, but, but it, it's all stories about fellas sticking chicken McNuggets up their anus. I've not found a story yet that tells us what day it is. Well, I don't much like it. Surely it must be nice for you to come back. Back for what, exactly? Hmm? You turned me down for a shag, and I'm sure miserable fucking Maud's on the horizon. I'd rather be this fellow with cooked produce up his ass. Oh, give over scriking about it. Do you fancy a fuck? Do our balls have a shop to run? Well, Maureen's at home, and if I'm in Norman's time loop, God bloody help me, because apparently he's depressed. I've spent most of my time wandering the streets to avoid anyone and everyone. Well, I'm one lucky bitch, then. So I'm fully aware of what happens if you stop around. I'm hoping I get out of it before I end up in bloody jail again. Well, I'm sure that's the idea. I'm pleased I've got out of it. I'm sure. You're a right wanker, but it's nice to go back to the pilot roleplay. How is old Ken doing, by the way? Because he's usually having a shocker, isn't he? If I was him, I'd have booked myself into an institution. Well, that's what Sorry Nation Street is. I don't think it's wise I go back to the street, if I know what's good for me. OK. I couldn't care less. I forgot how much shit Percy had here. Rusty old tools and twenty-year-old spam tins. Sit your ass down. I'm just having an ouzo if you want one. Uh, yes, uh, that and a diorolite. I might have some. Well, I've had breakfast with Blanche, so you can imagine. Have you still not found Deirdre yet? Because I've not seen her. She's back to being shacked up with John Lindsay, I'm afraid. No, that's not a good thing at all. She's only there for the shagging, so fuck the specky twat. Fair enough. Morning, Kenneth. Yes, hello. It's 12.30, Mr. Sugden. I'm not interested in what fucking time it is. Ooh. Oh, then just say hello and not good morning, you silly old tit. She's gone very bad-tempered, she has. She was soft as shit when I was last here. I don't know what's happened. I think she's toughened up since Norris. Well, she can simmer down or I'll take my service revolver and send it the same way as her husband. Good Lord. I'm not one to complain, but this is all a shock. You've not risen from the grave. No, no, that's true. Exactly. Now, Mrs. Bishop, I'll have a toasted tea cake when you're ready. Fine. <coughs> He's always been a character. Oh, I'm sure. I'm glad you're so amused by him. I don't know what it is about me and little bald bastards. Even before Ernest, I had 
Leonard bloody swindly pinching my ass every two minutes. It's why I've looked 75 for the last 20 years. Oh, hello, Fred. I've woken up with wonderful volume in my hair. Say much it first, though. It's not all changed. Well, to be fair, Fred, you're still a size. Now see, I'll stick you on thunder me fist. Oh, Fred, no. After what you've been through. Aye, I know. And having that all and sundry up there, I can vouch for its effectiveness. This time splitting's getting all too much for me. Too much for you? For you? <laughs> Thank you, lovey. You think you've got problems? Look, my Alfie doesn't have half the enthusiasm in the bedroom since he's come back. I don't blame the old cunt. Look, I don't represent David, you know. And I can't be blamed for any of it. Well, I'm sure you're enjoying my downfall, no doubt. I'm sorry. Why would I? You never wanted me wed to her, Bev. You were jealous. I was not, actually. I turned you down because I didn't want throttling to death with sausage links. That's a lie. You turned me down because you were grand with shagging about. And when you saw Bev having a slice of pie, you played fuck and smoked yourself daft. Carrying on with Bill Webster and boycotting me wedding on Christmas Day, then letting your grandson undo it all. No, get a fuck. You're an old fuck, Fred, you know that. If you think I can control David, you're thicker in the head than I gave you credit for. Oh, keep your voice down. You know what? I'm going home to Alpha. If you're pissed off with David, then take it out on him, but don't vent at me. I feel empty not working here, Rita. Well, I don't give much of a shit. I can tell that much. You'll never know how good you had it, woman. Or could have had it in some ways. I feel like going over and seeing Emily. I think it's best if you steer clear. The world's not ready for Norris versus Percy. I've not the ears for it. You're all right. You haven't been transported back to a dodgy flat with a crackhead neighbour like I have. Any further back, you'll be Derek's mate again. God forbid that happens. Look, she's just left the house. She doesn't know where she is, the poor old fucker. She's perfectly fine, Norris. You say that now, but we're either side of some very unsavoury characters and she's vulnerable. What is it with Emily and you old duffers? I lived with her and I was quite happy with that arrangement, I'll have you know. You just feel useless because Mavis has taken your place. Before all this, I was getting steak pie and chips every night. Now I'm back to microwave lasagna. It's got fuck all to do with a cabin. Why are you here then? Because if I don't talk to somebody besides Vera Duckworth, I'm going to go around the friggin' twist. Look, there's now we can do about all this, so shut it. Maybe this may be a pain in the ass, but it's been a welcome change from you. It's bad enough I'm stuck with Mr. Sugden without you stalking me. What are you trying to do? This is a third migraine in two days, thanks to all this. I don't need it. Uh, I just want things to go back to the way they were, for all our sakes. You are right, Emily. You look like flash-fried shit. Just Mr. Sugden. And this nosy bastard. I'm going for some more ouzo. I'll come for one too. No. I don't know what time scale you're in, but just stay in it, Norris. I cannot handle you and Mr. Sugden in the same house. It's a vile notion. I just want you to know, Emily, I feel a lot happier. Oh, you've got no fucking soul, Rita. You've not changed a bit. Listen, I'll not be ignored. This is serious. You stay out. Mavis is back off a dinner hour soon and I can't be doing with Clash. Oh, get off me arm, you silly old twat. I'm not a doped-up asylum inmate. Just go away before I crack your glasses. Listen, I think I should hang about in case Percy fucks off and you're alone. Don't get my hopes up. Oh, now, now, don't be like that. Oh, without a lodger, you're a complete charity case. Everyone knows that. You just want to cook meal every night and free accommodation. It's nothing to do with protecting me. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going inside to get wrecked. Uh, well, at least allow me to vet the place. Make sure Percy's not upsetting you. You've clearly got a right cob on today. Is it any wonder? Getting followed around by a jabbering goblin does that to you. Look, just let me in and I'll see the place is suitable. No, just, look, go home. For fuck's sake, Emily. Just, just fuck off home, Norris. Just go. I can't believe Audrey's not there. 
I wanted a quick blow dry before I went back to the cabin. Well, how about a blow job instead? I'm in no condition for that, Ken. Oh, oh, sake, look at him. Oh. Mavis. <laughs> You were right about the weight. Choosing to forego the morning fuck has made me a horn devil. You're poking right through your trousers, Derek. Well, it's a flasher, Mac, isn't it? Look, this is all very frustrating. I'm going to go to the lavatory before it's too late. Very well. Put that away, you dirty bastard. Now, why would I do that? Let's get home and use it to the full. No chance. I've got spasms in my ass. This happens when the balls are blue. Well, I'm late for work, so you'll have to wait. <laughs> I forgot your work. I thought I'd leave the helmet on later. This can't be good for your heart. It's never been stronger. Oh, Mavis. Come on. M M Mavis! What's all this shit? It's transitional clutter, Mother. I've not changed and Dev's still at the shop. It takes time to get it all in order. I'm not that good. Gotta drip feed this magical shit. Where's Martin, then? At a flat with jailbait. And Sarah? She's disappeared somewhere. I'm the only one who can go where I want. Elizabeth squirted this morning, so she did. Linda's gone from my flat. Hey, up. Gentlemen, Sandy, it's brought you back too. Me and a few others. Excuse me, bimbo features. Yes, what can I get you? Oh, it's you. Apparently so, yes. Though I've not a fucking clue why or how. Do you want that? Well, I've not come here to go up at you, have I, you daft bitch? Hello, Bet. It seems as though we're back to being nuptially bound. Well, I can barely keep me knickers on, Alec. Well, let's have a drink before we get kinky now. Get in there, Sandy! Well, go on if you're going. <coughs> Do you want a drink? Go on, whiskey. Stick four in. Very strange being back here. How long have you been back? About three minutes. I just materialised. You're looking very tight arsed, I must say. Tarcock. I think I've a right to. Why is that? You, obviously. You always did get me anxiety up from day one. It's all David Platt, this. Gail always had a wrong in there. You called that yourself, if I remember. What could a deviant street do without more than a prophet of the devil? Yeah, just shut up making it worse, Alec, will you, for fuck's sake? All right, keep your beehive on, woman. Just take your pants off and let's get it over with. <laughs> this house doesn't stink as much now. I used to hate coming here for a free brew with that pong up my nostrils. And you know, I've never paid for me dinner the amount of houses I scrounge off in a week. Hey, am I boring you or summit, poor-faced trout? Oh, no. I'm just thinking about our Deirdre is all. Silly bitch. Oh. She is that. Imagine choosing shagging over your own dignity. Oh, for me all that stopped long back. Oh I when Cyril carked it, well my daughter is in need of some old-fashioned celibacy. <laughs> that fella put her in jail and it doesn't matter to her. He can't be happy with it himself. She had bad reviews on game. Listen, I'm not here for maudlin fucking whinging. I'll get me freebies elsewhere. Even though we've jumped back, I still feel old. You've got people rising from the dead. Derek Wilton behaving like a teenager. And me daughter with the worst haircut she's ever had. Ah, well, I'm still a codger too, you know. I went to the cafe earlier. Roy made me a bacon butty. Then whilst I was chewing it, everything went blurred. And then it turned into Jim's. And I walked out onto Rosamond Street. So fucking what? Oh, it's useless. Telling you. It's the same as talking to a rotten vegetable. I bet every day is the same to you, isn't it? Oh, yes. <laughs> Do you like them biscuits? <coughs> Giving me right indigestion, like the ones Mrs Walker used to buy. She had no taste buds, that one. 
It's no wonder Ken shits himself, you know. These and stuff marrow every week. Hey, I've just thought, if that cafe's turned into Jim's, well, we might say I'll see Tanner back. Shit. So, I wondered if you could help me. And what in the name of Ina's stinking bloody vestry can I do for a wretch like you? I used to run this place before the fracture. It really did go downhill. As it happens, Sunshine, I'm not terribly arsed. I don't want to be here. Any more than the rest of these ghosts of sorry Nation Street past. Hey, now. You're lucky you've been made relevant again, pal. Now, about me. What about you, exactly? Well, you know. You want me to put you in charge? If you think I would, you're off your trolley. You could have asked Bet, but you know she'll rip you a new one like she's done before with our Vicky. No, we don't see eye to eye, I'll admit that. I am more bothered about my own issues than soppy little scrotes. It's less work for you, innit? You're about twelve. Not mentally. That's a matter of opinion. I'd rather play house with Bet than have some juvenile delinquent taking over. I'll have a pint and no chat. I've just been to see Blanche. Is that why you're gracing us with another of your famous smiles, Betty? Oh, give over, will you? It's 2003 in that miserable bloody house. What, and what are we, 93? This pub's about ten years behind that. I can't fucking cope with it all. Now, Betty, at least you've not got the fat controller to wake up next to every morning. Look, I'm not fucked with you and Alec. You're both a pair of dramatic twats who deserve one another. Fuck you both. Linda's gone from the flat. you still got the key. And we're probably fucking married again. Oh, come on, it's not that bad, Mike. She did that ball capping thing you never did. You were a right turn off stinking a chip fat. All right, Grimshaw. How'd you like me wizardry? Go fuck yourself, Platt. I'll take requests for a tenner. Oi! What you want about you? Tenner, and I'll give you Candice. Ten! Twenty and I'll throw in Violet. Yeah, suits me straight. Only because I'm single and I don't know what day it is. Fucking hell. You are one sad nymphomaniac. Oh, you're moping? No! Oh, well, uh, I must say I'm very disappointed in you twatting your manager with that scoop and all in front of a shop full of people, including Mrs Bishop. I don't care. Personally, if it were me... With a weapon, I'd have finished him off. Mr. Sugden, mate, I just want peace, all right? No veteran wisdom. I have a gun, just so you know, Norman. And if you're thinking you're above advice, maybe that'll sway your thinking. Look, it's ten shots for a fiver, and I want to get fuck face. Oh, we should celebrate Alec returning. Oh, fuck that. Now sit down. A pint as well, please. And a blue nun. Ah, oh, so you're back. Yep, I am. I'm off for some dogging later. With the criminal? That's right. <laughs> How dare you? Well, I thought it was the best display of contempt. Oh, so you're now using your filthy affliction to protest, are you? Well, I think I'm losing the will to live, so why not? Good. If you want to sit in a car park with a convict and steam up the glass, then more fool you, I say. Yes, well, I'm getting more than you, you flatulent twat. Do you not want to go back to having better hair and stability? I don't. Because you're a bitch. Oh, hello, Deirdre. I've got some Sambucas coming if you're interested. Uh, no, thanks, Emily. I've got some scheduled orgasms with John. <laughs> <laughs> she deserves absolutely nothing less. <laughs> I, I'm off then. No oh, shame. Give my regards to the fraudster. Fancy shacking up with that bell end. I'm not really that bothered. I suppose apathy has always been your problem, hasn't it? You don't care who or what you allow in your box. Bye then. Bye. Bye. So, how are you going to deal with all this then? Get wrecked. Become a sociopathic asshole and tell everyone what I think of them. Good. If these people are just echoes, mirages, well, it won't matter. You're hardly burning bridges, are you? Oh, exactly. So I think I'll start with you, you scone-eating, Bible-thumping old cock fossil. Deirdre. Blanche. Brad Alley out. Kevin Webster. 
Davy Platt. Jack. And we've here to deal with Devil Ann. Ken! This is the Sorry Nation Street Appreciation page where just one pound a month will help me continue to produce the most wretched content to make your day a better one. Thank you so much in advance for what you're doing for me. Without you all, things like this don't get any recognition. Subscribe monthly today and let's all be harmlessly ruder.